In this video, we're going to look at proof by counterexample. And this is a method where we've got to find an example that isn't true for a particular mathematical statement. And it only has to be one example. Because if we can find just one example that isn't true, this will disprove the whole statement. And so let's go through three typical examples where we've got to prove that each of the following statements are false. In the first example, we're told that if P is greater than Q, then P squared is greater than Q squared. And in the second example, we're told that if X is greater than Y, then one over X is less than one over Y. And finally, in the third example, we've been told that if N is prime, then one plus N factorial is also prime. Okay, so let's get started and have a look at the first question. So if P is greater than Q, then P squared is greater than Q squared. Well, we can try various values of P and Q and then see whether one of these sets of values will make the statement false. And to do this, it's often helpful to draw a table. So for this question, we can label the columns P, Q, P squared, Q squared, and whether the statement is true or false for particular values of P and Q. So let's first try P is equal to 2 and Q is equal to 1. And so P squared is 4 and Q squared is 1. And we can see that P is greater than Q and P squared is greater than Q squared. So that means this is true. So now let's try a fraction. Let's say P is a half and Q is a third. So P squared is a quarter and Q squared is a ninth. And you can see that P is greater than Q and P squared is greater than Q squared. So this is also true. We could now try a negative number. So let's try P is equal to minus one and Q is equal to minus three. So P squared is one and Q squared is nine. And as you can see, P is greater than Q, but P squared is not greater than Q squared. It's less than Q squared. So that means this is false. And because we have found one counterexample, the statement must be false. Okay, so this answers question one. Now let's look at question two. If X is greater than Y, then one over X is less than one over Y. So as before, let's create a table of values, but this time label them X, Y, one over X, one over Y, and whether the statement is true or false for particular values of X and Y. So let's try X is equal to two and Y is equal to one. So one over X is a half and one over Y is equal to one. So this is true because two is greater than one and a half is less than one. Now let's try fractions. So let X be equal to a half and Y be equal to a third. So one over X is equal to two and one over Y is equal to three. And this is also true because a half is greater than a third and two is less than three. Okay, so now let's try negative numbers. So let's say X is equal to minus five and Y is equal to minus six. So one over X is minus 0.2 and one over y is equal to minus 0.17. And this is again true because minus five is greater than minus six and minus 0.2 is less than minus 0.17. So we could now try a positive and a negative number. So let x be equal to two and y be equal to minus three. So one over x is a half and one over y is minus a third. And this is false because although two is greater than minus three, a half is not less than minus a third. And therefore, because we found a counterexample, the statement must be false. Okay, so finally, let's look at the third example. So if n is prime, then one plus n factorial is also prime. So let's create a table with columns n, 1 plus n factorial, and whether the statement is true or false for particular values of n. Now let's pick the first prime number, which is 2. So 1 plus 2 factorial is equal to 3. And as 3 is also a prime number, the statement is true for this value of n. 
Now try the next prime number, which is 3. So 1 plus 3 factorial is equal to 7, which again is a prime number. And so the statement still appears to be true. So try the next prime number, which is 5. And so 1 plus 5 factorial is equal to 121. But 121 is not a prime number because it's divisible by 11. And so this is false. And so as we found a counterexample, the statement must be false. OK, so that's how you answer typical proof by counterexample questions. If you found this video useful, please like it and subscribe to my channel where you'll find more A-level maths videos. Thanks for watching.